Hello, Pio Nation. I hope you're doing well. My name is Matt Williamson. Go ahead and introduce yourself. I'm Corey McFan. All right, and you are watching Married Ecology Esports. Uh, so today we have our Valor team back in action as they will be going up against Defiance College as part of the Great Lakes Esports Conference. They've been warming up and we are just a few moments away from the map picks and bands. So we want to get to that soon. So before we do that, we'll go ahead and go over the roster for our Valorant team. So we have quite a few on the, the roster here. And I always forget that this screen is so small for me that it's hard for me to, to see the, the names. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull up another picture that's just a little bit larger to see. But where do I have all this stored? That's the one thing about getting the uh, the stream and all that uh, set up here. I think I have, let's see, not where I have that. You can see the roster. I can't see it very well. So I'm going to see if I can get larger names here. Because I know we have freshman Walker Dale here. We have Corey McFan here child casting with us to talk about the game. Because you guys can t know what my commentary was like last week. Um, we have... Octavio and Osvaldo and I'm still trying to get the right image up that is that's not the right one that's this one here and that is okay so that's going to be this screen right here there we go that's much easier to see for us yeah so we have yeah we have Osvaldo Nito Oxyron uh, Octavia Padre, Edible Drywall. We have our Captain Dylan Pohl, Senior Res. Uh, we have Tyler Rich, uh, Bubs, uh, Sophomore Jasmine Smith, Extra Explorer, and Senior Spence Tennies, who's also called Spence. And then we have our, our head coach, uh, Derek Games. But yeah, I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, let me double check the... Okay, they haven't started the maps and picks. Um, but... Yeah, and I think they're still getting some things set up with the lobby. So I'm just making sure that everything is good to go and that we don't miss a thing. Everything so far so good on the, the Discord. But all right, I'm going to go ahead and move it over to the map picks and bands just in case they do get things started up without us knowing. So that's going to be this button right here. All right. So we're just waiting for the map picks and bands to start. Uh, Defiance is the, the home team, so I do believe they'll be picking first. Um, so, Corey, do you have any predictions on ideal maps that would be selected or banned right from the get-go? Because I know nothing about this game. I mean, personally, I think Pearl is the worst map in the game. So if anything, I would, first off, ban Pearl. It's so hard to play on. Unless you know exactly what you're doing and when you want to do it, you have to... I would, I would just ban it personally. Okay, I, I think, think that, that was the, the I think the, the that was the first ban last week in the the match with Alma. Now Marietta banned that first, so who knows? I mean, maybe Defiance doesn't like it either, and they'll ban it first. But maybe there's something else uh, that they that they don't like. Personally, the maps I would want to go for uh, would be Icebox, Breeze, or Ascent. Okay, those would be the ones that. I feel comfortable on. I don't know about the rest of the team personally. Okay. But those are the maps I would ban. They they're the most balanced on both sides, so it's like no issues there. Okay. And what makes some of the other maps not as well balanced? Well, fracture is very heavy towards attacker's side. So we're just where you can get so many angles attack from so many angles. There's like they could be anywhere on the map at any given time, and it's just hard to tell. Haven, three points. There's the, the only map with three points in the game, so okay. it's just hard to defend. Yeah, that, yeah, I think I remember that. Yeah. It's hard to it's hard defending with three different sites because you really have to spread yourself thin for that. Yeah. Find is just unbalanced in general. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible. And then... For obvious reasons. All right. Well, we will see what they are. What they're gonna pick. Um, they should be starting any minute now. Uh, they're not saying anything here on the Discord. 
I'm gonna just check and just see if the lobby has been made. Doesn't look like it. And I hope they add me onto the game so we don't miss it because that would be very bad. Um, but yeah, let me go check on the team real quick just to make sure that uh, things are progressing. But you know, I will be right back in just one second here. Check on the team. Um, but yeah, so hold on one second here. All right, so we should be getting things started very soon. So while we're waiting, we might as well just go ahead and go over a couple of announcements uh, as we are uh, waiting. We're still going to keep an eye on the map picks and bans. So as soon as they start, we will get that uh, right to you. Uh, but just as a few reminders, we have several matches uh, coming your way. So this match right here is not the only one for today, but later on, we will be playing Defiance once again, but it'll be with our League of Legends team. So that'll be at three o'clock. Uh, what we'll probably end up doing is we'll we'll take down the the stream for this match afterwards, give the stream a little bit of a break, and then we'll come back uh, close to three, uh, where our League of Legends team will play against Defiance, and then on Tuesday our League of Legends team will return to play against Lords University uh, at six o'clock. So we do hope you will come back uh, for that. Now we'll have even more matches in the the coming weeks. So just to give you give you an idea of what our Valorant team is going to be doing. We have quite a few uh, games coming your way. So next week, we'll be playing against Marion Technical College. Uh, the following week, we'll be playing Ohio Northern. The week after that, we'll be playing against Tiffin. Uh, the week after that, we'll be Trine. Uh, the following week, we'll actually have two Valorant matches with Baldwin Wallace and Mount Vernon uh, Nazarene University. The week after that, we'll be Manchester. And then we close out the season with Mountain Union. So we have quite a few matches coming your way. And this is just in the Great Lakes Esports Conference, might I add. Once we start uh, participating in the NACE competitions, our Valorant team will be also playing every Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Uh, so you'll see not one, but two matches on average uh, for the Valorant team every week. So they're going to be very busy uh, for this semester. Uh, now, if you are a fan of other games, we have a variety of titles for our esports program. So we are always looking for students for every all the games we support, whether it's Fortnite or League of Legends uh, or Overwatch 2, Rainbow Six, uh, Rocket League. We just got Super Smash Brothers running as of yesterday. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, and of course, we do have our Valorant team. So um but yeah so we have our dedicated facility on campus we have uh, several coaches uh, we try to provide support for our players inside and outside of esports uh, and if you are a high school senior or a college transfer uh, we do have scholarships available so more information for all those forms can be uh, found at our link tree uh, linkter.ee slash marietta esports so speaking of scholarships we do have tryouts uh, for those scholarships we did one earlier today uh, our next set of tryouts will be on Saturday, September 24th. That is two weeks from today if you are watching live on Twitch. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, it's going to be a little less than that. Um, but yes, yeah, so make sure... Okay. Making sure they haven't started the picks and bands yet. Um, I think we're echoing a little bit. Yeah, that's because of the mics. We might have to do... Let's try one thing here. All right. Say something real quick, Corey. See if this mic picks you up. Hello, everybody. <laughs> okay, we might be able to get away with one mic. Um, yeah, we have two mics in, in the station to make sure that everyone can talk. But if one mic is sufficient to uh, cover all of us, then we don't need to have both mics right at the same time. That's just one of the things of the new setup. Um, so I will get to that setup in just a second here from one of our sponsors. Uh, but yeah, to participate in our scholarship tryouts is a three-step process so you want us to fill out our recruitment recruitment inquiry form at bit.ly slash mc recruit uh, then to schedule the the actual tryout uh, which is bit.ly slash mc esport tryout so our next one will be in conjunction with our uh, stem open house visit day so 
Uh, if you plan to come to the campus during the STEM visit day, you can come check out our facility and we can try you out and hopefully give you a scholarship. And then also join our Discord server, uh, bit.ly uh, slash Pio Discord. Uh, so all the QR codes are up on the screen. Uh, now check in chat to make sure everything is good here. Okay, that looks, everything there looks fine. Uh, still checking. They have not started picks and bands. So speaking of the whole mic thing, uh, we do need to give shout out to our uh, supporters over at HyperX because they did provide us with several uh, peripherals. Uh, so our esports room is now equipped with keyboards, mice, headsets, mouse pads, and we got some new mics. So I think we got the echo issue taken care of, uh, but we do got some really sick mics here uh, from HyperX. So hopefully the, at least the audio quality is much better than what we were streaming last year. And if you would like to get your own HyperX gear, uh, you can go to hyperx.gg slash Marietta ES. Uh, and the QR code is up on the, the screen as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, definitely check it out. I think just recently HyperX announced uh, it was like their birthday, 20 years of providing peripherals for gamers. So they do have a, a lot of great deals going on between now and I believe the end of October. So definitely uh, check that out. Uh, well, also speaking of shout outs, we do want to give a shout out to Over the Moon Pizza. Uh, they are also supporting uh, the esports program. So starting soon, uh, they will be airing uh, some of our matches at their restaurant. So if it's a Tuesday evening and you're feeling hungry, you can go get some pizza over at Over the Moon and you might see some esports matches while you're there. Uh, so definitely go check them out if you're in the uh, Marietta area. All right, so I'm checking everything. I am in the lobby. Uh, let's see here. So we're just making sure that everything is set up properly. Checking the chat. Okay, so yeah, everyone is getting in there and they haven't started picks and bands yet. At least I don't see anything marked here. So I think now we're just kind of playing the waiting game to make sure everything is set up. Uh, we do see a couple of follows on the Twitch channel. So thank you so much for the, the follows. It is uh, much appreciated. Um, I mean, we're trying to do our best to grow our program and it's people like you that watch and support our program that help make that happen. Um, we also thank all those who have subscribed to our Twitch channel because that does go a long way with some of the stuff that we're trying to do with our program. Now, we know that sometimes Twitch subscriptions, I mean, Twitch subscriptions cost money. But if you have Amazon Prime, did you know that there is this thing that is called Prime Gaming where you could support a Twitch channel of your choice for free? Um, all you have to do is create a free Twitch account. Uh, then you can go to Prime Gaming or gaming.amazon.com, click on Try Prime, and you would connect your Amazon account to your Twitch account. And then you can just use your Prime Gaming sub. You get a free sub every month that you can use. Uh, so you can use our channel. If you want to sub another channel, that's fine. I'm not going to be upset. I won't lose sleep over it. Uh, but uh, you can uh, subscribe to our channel. And some of the perks you get with that include instant access to our VODs. Uh, so we'll have our videos up uh, on Twitch right after the broadcast. So you can check them out immediately. Uh, we do put them up on our YouTube channel later on next week. But if you're an impatient person like I am, you, you're going to want the instant access to the VODs. Uh, you also get access to our custom Married to College excuse me, emotes, which you see on your screen, just a few ways to express your emotions of how the pioneers are doing their matches. So you get those kind of benefits. Uh, you can even give subscriptions. There's all sorts of ways to, to help support the, the program. So uh, we do want to thank everyone uh, for that. But all right, look, everyone is still trying to get things positioned in the, the lobby. I'm still going to check once again because I didn't see, I haven't seen them do the stuff here. So I'm just going to go back and check the team. So hang on for just a second, folks. We will get this underway.
Okay. So this is what happens when there's technical difficulties. Apparently, they have already done the map picks and bands, and um, I had the wrong link. So we're going to go over what was picked and what was banned. I don't know the order, but we will just pull it up here so you guys can see what has been selected. So if I can make sure that everything looks good on our end. All right. And so we're going to go to here. All right. So Corey, let's take a look at the analysis with this. So it looks like the, we'll be playing Ascent, Bind, and Icebox. I don't know. Were those your predictions? Uh, well, I, I predicted Icebox and Ascent. Uh, I did not predict Bind. I did not expect them to choose Bind. Um, oh, Defiance is a who wanted Bind, so that kind of yeah. makes sense. Yeah, Defiance chose Bind. It looks like Marietta chose Icebox. Um, and then I don't know the order, so I guess we're going to find out very quickly. But for... Uh, for Ascent, Defiance will attack and Marriott will defend first. For Bind, Defiance will attack and Marriott will defend first. And for Icebox, Defiance will defend and Marietta will attack first. So any thoughts about these selections for sides? Uh, well, they picked mostly uh, most of the balanced maps. So... Okay. And really, really it, should, it could go either way. I don't know much about Defiance, so I don't know how they play, All but... Right. It could go either way in All this right. situation. Well, let's find out because it looks like we're already starting and it is going to be fine first. They have already selected their agents here. So we're in round one. So, so what do you think about the composition here for the pioneers? So uh, Maria is defending first. They went heavy like damage base. It looks like the only heals they have uh, is Reyna. Other than that, they don't have any heals. Uh, they they want with the Reaper, not the Reaper, the uh, Omen. They're gonna want to play fast paced. So, to be fair, Omen looks a lot like Reaper yeah. in Overwatch. And I'm I play Overwatch mainly, <laughs> so you'll have that. Okay. Now I'm gonna double make sure we get a couple of FPS issues taken care of. So I'm gonna close this just to make sure. Because it is hiccuping just a second here. Come on, going out. Esper Defiance is a okay. Opposition. They went with the Astra. Okay, we're getting some weird technical issues here. Not a great start for our stream. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. I think we're reconnecting, and we should be able to get back. Okay, there we go. Now we're back. Looks like it's just Wave that's left, and he goes down, and Defiance will take the first map, or first round, sorry. Now, it's gonna be, it might, if their Astra knows what they're doing, it's gonna be kind of difficult for Marietta to get around that. A good Astra player is a very useful ally and a very dangerous opponent. Okay, so what options are available to them then? Uh, well, it's mainly getting around their, the smokes is gonna be the big thing for them. I can't play too aggressive because then they'll just go in and die, but at the same time can't play too defensive. You gotta find that balance. Yeah, it looks like the fines is saying, like going all in to site B. And that's going to force Winnie Hut to kind of fall back a little bit. Already getting smoked. And we're already seeing several of the pioneers falling. Spike planted. One down. Here. Here. And Bob's is able to get one frag, but can he get more? But he's going to fall, and Winnie Hut's going to be the only one that's standing for the pioneers. Strange interaction that just happened. It was like the Astra, the the sky line bugged out. But yeah, I think it was actually a double team there. Yeah. 
Now this is an, a very important uh, round for Marietta. If they lose this round, they are screwed on eco for a good while. Just because Defiance is going to have a very a, a better econ advantage. Yes. All right, so we see it looks like a 4-1 split by Defiance. They're going to go to Site B. And Hisoka is going to be... Can I keep an eye? He sees the smoke coming out. Not getting a chance to hit target. Wave ends up falling in the process. He's trying to shoot him blind to see if it connects on the but not going to find anyone through that smoke. Meanwhile, we looks like we see Bubs and... And Spence does get one frag as Defiance rotates over to Site A. As the spike is being planted. Bubs does get disoriented. But can he go in to make a play? He does get one. But he ends up going down. One enemy remaining. And Spence is going to be trying to defuse. And they do eliminate everyone from Defiance, so Marietta will take the round. That much needed round you were talking about. Yeah, that, that was a make it or break it moment for Marietta right there. If they had lost that, then their econ would have been pretty... They would have been at a huge disadvantage for a good amount of rounds. <laughs> oh, it was clutch that they were able to... Now let's see if they can keep that momentum um, and see if they can get ahead on Econ. I think they just need a couple rounds to get some of the jitters off, but we'll see how they do here. It looks like Hisoka is going to go with a sniper rifle, so very interesting choice. We'll have to see how that plays out for him. Trying to check to see if anyone comes by that window, and he might catch someone. He... And he gets smoked, has to fall, uh, fall away. And that is unfortunate. It's just hard to go up against when you're just holding that sniper. Wave is going to be looking to try to move in. But right now, Defiance has that spike well planted. Weeding does get one down. Looking for more, but she has to fall. But Wave gets one, but I don't think he's going to have time to disable it. No, he, he's got to kill all three of them before. Yep, and there he goes. Defiance seems to be playing really slow. Almost as if they're waiting for Marietta to push them first. Which is a valid strategy, but... I've got enough time to go the may not floor. work if uh, Marietta plays super defensive. Yeah, I mean, they're not... I see what you're saying. They're not rushing to the site extremely fast. It's like they're waiting for Marietta to make a move down, Bobby, and then react to me. it. And now we're seeing, it looks like Defiance is going to be heading over to Site B. And Spence has already taken down one. Flashbang. I don't know if he's going to see one. No, he does see one, not able to get the shot. But Wave was able to take down one, but I don't think he's going to see any more over there. Meanwhile, Bubs is firing into the smokes. For a second, falls back, but he should be good now. Now, looks like the Defiance is going to be rotating over to Site B. I mean, this rotating is taking a lot of clock for Defiance, though, so that does give Marietta at least an advantage. A lot of time to realize what's going on. 30 oh, seconds left. A fake rotate. 
Yeah, because Spence is going to be heading over, but, but now it's just going to be Wave and Bubs over at Site A. Cover going out. And I think Wave is wondering if Alliance is and back, and Bubs is able to get one. Left. So now Marietta knows where Defiance is at. And with only a few seconds left, Marietta might just be able to eat out the clock. That was very smart play by Marietta right there. Just waiting for them to make a move, and it never happened. So they won the round because of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like you don't the think about this game. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm getting choked here. You don't necessarily need to go in and force a play because, I mean, if you can stay alive and keep your weapons, it might as well do that. No need to try to go in for the kill if you've already secured the round. Or am I missing something? Uh, no, that that's about right there. Uh, on offense, you do want to be go in, make a play, stuff like that. But on defense, if you can wait out that timer, by all means, do it. All right, so we see Soka's going to... Get into it when one has to fall back. Throws the grenade. A little bit more of a, an aggressive play from Defiance this round. He's taking some hits, but he's still fine, but kind of stuck in that corner, having to use that little bit of a smoke to stay alive. Fire in the and that's a complete denial of that raise ultimate. This does fall, but but now the rest of the pioneers are moving in. Okay, so what is he doing here? I don't know how this game works. What what all is this? Uh, it kill killjoy's what all is just basically a radius remaining. that. If you get left. stuck in it by the time Spike the timer goes off, beat. it Last will detain you. You can't do anything. Okay. Slow movement, you can't pull out your gun, you can't shoot. You can't use that is so unfortunate. Mary was down for a 1v1 and just got headshot at the end. And that's going to be enough to plant this. Well, they were able to secure the round at the very end. Defiance did use a lot of their ultimates there, and that's something that Marietta does have an advantage over them with, because they have almost all of their ultimates still. Meanwhile, Defiance only has the Phoenix ult. And that's more of like a self ult, not really, just more for uh, information it, or frags or something like that. Yeah, and even Bob's almost has his ult ready, so I would you would expect that maybe at least a couple ults being used by Marietta this round. And wave there with a double kill. Bubs ends up falling, but it's still a two for one in Marietta's favor with that exchange. Spence yeah. is checking where Bubs fell, but doesn't see anyone falling back. Meanwhile, Osvaldo is maybe looking for a flank. Spence is going to fall though in that exchange, but Wave is going to get his third kill for the round. Yeah, he's gonna get fourth. Is he gonna get the ace? Ooh, so close on that ace. But he did get Astra to half health and in a bad position. Getting pinched by two, the last two players on Marietta. Uh, Ahsoka's gonna be looking for the fifth. And that's the round. Very well played by Marietta right there. Yeah. Getting spiked down early, just playing that spike. I mean, how about Wave there with a 4K in that round? That was really impressive too, yes. <laughs> uh, this game is very aim oriented, but so it takes a lot of skill to get those kills yeah, and those headshots. Yeah, and we see Marietta used two ults the last round, um, but Mar they still have three ults ready to go versus the one from Defiance. Shadows traveling. Really, KO suppressing all the def all of Defiance's e cover going out. 
going to be very hard to for Defiance to push with that going. Oh. Spencer's just looking to see if there's a flank from behind. Oh, I'm sorry, that's Bubs. Spencer took the grenade. My bad. Bubs gets blinded, has to fall back. And so maybe looking to peek around. I mean, there are two there. And Wave does get one. Nice headshot. We didn't see it, but we but we know he got it. There's another one. Spence gets one, Wave gets one, so it's right now five feet. Wave does end up falling. One enemy remaining. And we need to get the killing blow, so Marietta secures the round. And we're tied up for a piece now. That initiating kill on that sky, that initi the kill on that initiator, big. An initiator's util is uh, the biggest part of getting a team onto a site. So getting that out of the way first was huge. Stumble now. Okay, so the rounds be done. Looks like the fight's maybe going all in onto site B. Hey. And Defiance does have that astral. Oh, which it does get that, one. That wall uh, from that astral could get them onto site pretty quickly. And smoothly. Putting them in a defensive position. Oh. Never mind. <laughs> I say that and Astra dies. Spence there with two kills so far. One enemy remaining. And Ahsoka getting one. It's just just Keller from the Vines left. And Bob's is going to come in and take that. Well, and now Marietta has taken the lead. A clean and flawless round for Marietta right there. I would say Barry getting their stride in. Arietta has put Defiance in a pretty bad position right here. Now both teams do have three alts ready to go. So we'll see if that plays a role in this round. Turn out. With both teams having a KJL, it could lead to an interesting round. Cover going out. They're trying to deny some vision there onto Defiance. You want to fight it? Just they the will go. No one can hear or see through that wall, and it goes throughout the entire map. So, could lead to some uh, pretty good plays for Defiance here. But, but Bob's was able to get one down already. Not ready yet. And now we're seeing Defiance is going to have to rotate around. Are they going to do a full rotate, or are they going to juke like they did a couple rounds ago? We'll see. But it's just eating up a lot of the clock. But Bob's is going to spot it out. A little bit of more of a split push. Some are still on A, uh, but... Others are going to 30 seconds left. scout out. Like, yeah, Soka's going to spot this out. And he's going to get the kill right away. Now that was a bit of a risky play. Just going straight in without checking those corners. Easy way to get killed. But it does get info for the team. 10 seconds left. People, they do know that there are people... On B site. Yeah, it looks like the clock is going to run out and Barry is going to secure the round, unless something weird happens in the next second. Marietta does secure another round, so now they're up six to four. Now, rolls will swap after a couple of rounds, so I would expect in the next round that everyone's going to go all in. Because everything resets after a swap, right? Yes. Uh, ultimates, eco, everything just resets whenever that half swap. We'll 
we'll see how things go. It looks like Defiance is aiming for Site B this time. They have to know that they're right around the corner from each other. They have to. Never know. Ooh. If he would have gotten that kill, that would have been a big, big thing for Marietta right there. He's going to try to throw some stuff up there, but he's going to end up falling. Spence is going to get one, looking for two. Does not get it, so it's a one-for-one one trade. The rest of Marietta is running in. Weenie Hut has to fall back. And the spike has been planted. Spike planted. Ooh. And then the failed attempt at an ult KJ ultimate from uh, Weenie Hut. Authentic. Bob's gets one. Can he get more? Gets two. One enemy remaining. He's going to try to defuse while everyone is covers. And they should be able to secure the round. And they do. Last round before the switch. So here we go. All in, right? All in. Is it all or it gets wasted? Ooh, it looks like... Uh... Marietta's raise is going for an Odin. And then we have an op KO. It looks like Wave has been having a really good game today. I mean 10 7 2. Although Bubs has been doing very well too. Already seeing ults being used. That Odin is gonna be hard to push. Unless that happens. <laughs> Very well played on the uh, raise kill there. I defiant. And Spence is gonna get a nice snipe shot. Winnie Hug gets one, but it's a one for one trade there. Boom. Great shot there by Bubs. Flank. One enemy remaining. Spike down, B. Bomb grenade out. Question. Winnie Hut might get flanked from behind. And she does. But Wave is going to catch this, I think. Shadows traveling. Here. 30 seconds left. And they're just trying to keep Garrett away from the uh, the site. Trying to rotate around see if he can get the spike. But he's not going to have that chance. Bob's is pretty close to where the uh, the spike is down. It doesn't look like uh, Defiance is going to have time in. There goes the Astra. Switching sides. All right, so Marietta will now be on offense. I mean, this first round is critical, too, because if you get the win, then you have a huge advantage in the next one. The advantage. You're able to, uh, if you if you win, you're able to buy better guns than the other team on this first round, on the second round. And you're able to get shields, which is a big advantage in this game. I mean, especially, like, guys, it's 8-4. to four. Marietta has been on a 6 round winning streaks so far so they are definitely getting their stride and figuring out how to how to work together yeah. it looks like they're going to be going for site a Stealing sight. and they're just wasting no time rushing in bobs has already got one frag Quick entry by Marietta. Now that they're on defense. They've already got the spike plan. I didn't even realize that. One 
one for one trade. There's only one left. And will Wave get he and he gets another 4k. He's 4k is out of this man. It's insane left and right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're already seeing differences in the play style. We saw that Defiance was playing a little bit slower, but Marietta's offense, they're just going straight in. They're not wasting any time. They don't want to time out like uh, Defiance did on multiple occasions. Yeah, it is first the 13, so Marietta's just a few rounds away, and they're going to have a huge advantage here since they were able to upgrade all their weapons. They got shields. I mean, nothing's guaranteed, but... Pretty aggressive from their sky right there. I think it's just looking for a very quick early play. Because sometimes if you get that early frag, it just slows down an offense. Especially as fast as what Mary is playing. Already planning the spike. One enemy remaining. And Soka getting, he's getting a 3k himself. Ah. And another yeah, flawless victory from Marietta right there. Yeah, we are just seeing a huge shift in momentum in the Pioneer's favor. They are just going in and winning in a matter of seconds. And just complete... Like, Defiance is completely off guard by this. I don't think they know how to respond. Marietta is just working really well together. At the same time, it's like they're all able... They're all doing really well on their own. So that kind of offense and or defense is really hard to compete against. <laughs> That's true. If you win the 1v1 battles, it's really hard to counter that. I think we got a little bit of a lag spike here. We so apologize for that, but we're back in. We're we're it's okay, folks. We're good. <laughs> a little bit technical difficulties right there. Wouldn't be a Twitch stream without it, right? If not. <laughs> but yeah, Mary's going all into site B. Winnie Hut does end up going down. But Hisoka takes down one. He's looking for more. Spence is able to take down one. And unfortunately, Spence does get shot there. But it is a 3v3. He's so oh, well, now it's a 3v2. One enemy remaining. Soka there with a 3k. Is he going to get a 4k this round? Uh, No, Wave is just going to get the headshot himself. Big plays from Marietta. <laughs> Damn, we're seeing like everyone is doing it. We're, we're seeing like Wave with the, the, the four Ks. Four Ks. Uh, Hisoka's getting a 3K himself. Spence is getting some great shots. And we're seeing some awesome plays from Buff. So I think everyone is doing fantastic. Mary is hovering over site A. Hisoka is going to be charging right in. Wasting no time. Which is the grade. Not going to catch anyone just yet. Charges. Big first pick from uh, Ray's right there. Blinded. On Defiance. Ray's and it gave info on the sky so they could trade aid them out. Just two left for Defiance. Spikes already planted. Spence does end up falling. Bob's just trying to make sure he doesn't get flanked from behind. Has to fall back while reloading. It just needs to hold. Right now it's a 2v2, but... If they can just stay alive, it's going to be hard for them to try to defuse that spike. And I think that spike's going to go off. Big kills from Wave right there. Match point. Yep, and we are at map points for this. And the way Marion has been playing... Like... I mean, they were down 2-4. to four, And they haven't lost a round since. I don't want to caster's curse this, but... There's just been a huge momentum swing in Marietta's favor. 
pretty big comeback. It looked bleak at first, but I feel like Marietta was just giving them false hope. <laughs> I don't, I don't think they were sandbagging. I really don't think so. But with three alts, they're already burning two of those three. They want to end this now. We got a one for one trade there. Big trade on the. That and is able to revive Spence, which is huge. Bubs and Hisoka getting down, so only two left for Defiance. One enemy remaining. Now it's just Phoenix in a 1v3 situation for the win. They just got a hold at this point. I think it's going to be really hard for Burger Boy to be able to go in there. Because I know if it were me, there's no way I'd be able to 1v3. Takes a lot of skill and a lot of luck and info to get <laughs> wins. It doesn't look like a uh, Burger Boy is gonna have enough time to get the kills and then get spiked. But instead, Bob's will secure it with a 3K. That's the game for Marietta. All right. But yeah, so with that, Marietta does secure that first map, 13 to four. As we were just talking about, at first it just looked like they were trying to figure out how to get their stride in, but once they figured that out, there was no turning back. Yeah, Marietta worked really well together. It, it, it didn't start out that great. Not gonna lie, it didn't start out great. But once they got a rhythm going, it they were just unstoppable. Defiance couldn't find a flaw in their defense or their offense mm -hmm. to get those kills to win around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we definitely have to give some kudos to like Wave. I mean, we're looking at the the stats here. K uh, Wave, Wave was at twenty eight three for his KDA. Uh, Husoko seventeen nine ten. Bubs was sixteen seven two, and Spence was even at ten eleven six. So just very strong performances uh, by all four of them. But, all right, we're going to get things set up for the second map. So we're going to take a very quick break, and we'll just be back in a, a few minutes as we get that set up.
All right, and welcome back. Uh, we're getting things uh, set up for the lobby for map two. So uh, for our understanding was Defiance picked Bind for that first map. And now we're going to be playing Icebox and Marietta chose that. And it looks like... Wait, who's attacking? Who's defending first? So we defended last one. I think we're attacking first on the... Okay. Yeah, because it looks like everyone's under the attacker side. Um, so it looks like... We're still waiting for a couple people from Defiance to uh, to join in. I think most of them are in the Observer and they're going to be uh, coming out. Just for everyone's view as we're waiting for here, I'm going to swap over to the score screen real quick. Just so it can remind ourselves on how the, the first game went. But uh, Pioneers had a very strong performance. Struggled at first, but then just went all out. No turning back at this point. So with this being Icebox, what are some things that you would expect to see from either the Pioneers or even from Defiance, depending on being on attacker or defense? Well, that really just depends on what site they go to. Uh, a, a site, the more enclosed and close corner site, tends to be more for like quick plays. But like B site, where it's like more open, you want to be like slower, like slower plays, more tactical. Interesting. So... Considering that Marietta plays a very aggressive style, then you would think that it would probably target Site A more, since they're gonna. It looks like it'll be attacking first. Yeah, it um, that would probably fit the play style that Marietta is going for right here. Mm -hmm. It looks like the ready checks are coming in, so I'm gonna make sure that we are ready. At least little someone asked if they were ready, and they haven't confirmed that uh, they're ready just yet. Uh, we are making one swap. Um, Rez will be coming in for Winnie Hut Jr., who is our, our team captain. So we'll see how that plays. Well, it looks like the ready checks are coming out. Marietta is ready, and I think Defiance is ready. So as soon as they start up, we'll I'll press this little button right here to say that we're ready. <laughs> oh, they're even counting down. Three, two, one, go! All right. Everything. Yes. So we are at Icebox. Marietta will be attacking. Defiance will be defending. What kind of agents would you expect here? I mean, we're already seeing a couple. I would expect a Viper for sure. On this map, Viper can be very uh, useful just because of the way that her smokes work. It's more for like pushing straight onto a site, you know? <laughs> Okay, and it looks like Marion has locked in one. I'm not so sure which one was locked in. It might be the Viper that got locked in. I don't know how this UI works. Looks like the ring. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Bob's dead. Okay, yeah, I see the color change. I'm figuring this out. Okay, yeah, Bob's locked in. So that's the Viper. Oh, no, not the Viper. The... I'm still trying to figure out agent names. Rez is locking in the chamber. That's the one I do know. It looks like uh, Wave and Hisoka have like swapped roles for this one for this game over the last one. It looks like uh, Wave is going for the duelist over the controller this time. And all right, any thoughts about Defiance's uh, composition for playing on defense? On defense, that uh, that Sage and Viper combo will be plus the KJ. I didn't even see the KJ there. That's going to be hard to break through. Two Sentinels and a controller. Or defensive style uh, composition right there. Yeah, so we will see. We'll see how this goes. But once again, Marietta will be attacking. So we'll see if they keep up that same hyper aggressive play style. Or are they going to have to adjust to the defenses that Defiance is going to try to run here? This game is going to be all about those first picks. If Marietta can get those first picks in, then it's set and match. Alright, well they are telegraphing that they are going to head over to Site A. And we already see there. three from Defiance over there ready to defend. Early pick from Bubs right there on the other on uh, Defiance's Reina. And it's 
once again, Marietta is not wasting any time getting into sight. They are not worried about the defenses that Defiance has. They are just going straight in. I'm keeping, I'm having a hard time keeping track of who's doing what. Already down to just one member left for Defiance. And he might just sit back and realizing there's just not much he can do. But Bob's is looking. And there you go with the 3k. It's like what you were saying earlier, where when you're on offense, you do want to try to make the play, even though when you feel pretty confident, you've won the round. That's going to give Marietta a very nice advantage going into round two. Already getting shields, already getting SMGs and rifles. At least I'm pretty sure those are. Yeah. Now, buying a rifle on this second round is a bit risky because if you die with that rifle and they and the other team picks up that hatch, they are at a huge advantage because they don't have to buy a rifle for next round saving eco for future rounds so let's see how bobs does with this rifle looks like early picks from, from wave Rez is going to get a frag. People just getting frags left and right here. Only one left for Defiance. Spence may be looking for him. Rez was looking for the flank, but Defiance is going to rotate around. And Bob's is going to get that headshot. Still hanging on to that rifle. Yeah, and like before, once again, Marietta is playing fast and Defiance just doesn't know how to handle it. We need a little bit of a lag spike. We should get back in here in a second. Just hang tight here. I think we're, we might be okay. We might. Okay, there we go. We're fine. It's all good. Maybe. Well, yeah, maybe not. Still, lagging. still reconnect. Lots of technical on this stream. Yeah, I think it's something to do with Valorant. I mean, it does require a lot more resources than some of the other games. So we're reconnecting. We're back in the action. We do apologize for that, folks. Spence has already gone down. And Bob's is hanging around site A, but looks like most of Mary is rotating long. around. Bob's getting a play there. It's a 3v3 right now. I think Bob's is just trying to keep that one person from Defiance. Staying at site A, just right behind there. And we're gonna see a rotate back into site A. Great hit there by Wave. And that should give them the free reign to go and plant the, uh, the spike. Now they just gotta hang on. enemy remaining. Rez getting the one frag, but I think Bubs might catch this last person. Oh, so close. And he ends up getting headshot. One enemy oh. Remaining. oh, now this is going to get close. It's just Wave versus the one member from Defiance. But can Wave at least eat out the clock on that uh, spike? Trying to defuse. Grenade. Gonna try to use the grenade. And it looks like we're just gonna time him out here. He doesn't have any more time. Ooh, and the eco frag. Yeah, ends up losing his life for it, but it's gonna be worth it. Maybe. In, in the long run, yeah, it will be worth it. He did lose the gun, but he'll, he's, he'll be able to buy a better gun. For it looks like he's already bought a, a good gun. It's. Getting another little lag spike here. You know, if we're going to get lag spikes, I'd rather have it during the buying phase than the actual game. Yeah. It's very true. Okay, the round has begun. Going 
And it's just like we talked about earlier, because of that aggressive playstyle, they just keep aiming for site A. Rez already getting a, a frag with the sniper. Almost got a second. That would have been a big kill, because that was their Viper right there. And getting Viper down early would be huge for uh, Marietta. Bob's there getting the 2k is getting one down. There's only one left for Defiance, and it's just the Viper that's left. Never mind, Viper goes down. A flawless victory for the Pioneers, and they're up 4 to 0. Marietta's aggression is just unmatched. It's, Defiance just can't keep up. <laughs> Just take a quick peek at the weapons. Okay, that's what they got. All right. I'm wondering if pulling that up is what's causing some of the lag. Uh, it is a possibility. I really doubt it. Maybe this spot one out. Gonna throw grenades. See if catches anyone. Early frag on the viper. That's gonna be huge for Marietta. And, and Rez getting a frag himself. Wave launching right in. And everyone's just going down left to right. Alts are being used by both Wave and Bubs. That was a really fast round right there. Yeah, how f I, I lost. Yeah. <laughs> Can someone time that for us? <laughs> what? What even happened there? <laughs> they won. That's what happened. <laughs> a lot happened in a very short time. Yeah, it's like as soon as the Viper went down, it's just like, okay, go, 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 just jump in. Which makes sense, because as you're saying, we gained that early frag is huge on the on the Viper. Getting the kill on that uh, controller early will uh, take off any zoning opportunity that also Defiance has. Now, look at this. We are seeing that Marietta is going to change things up and go to Site B. They have Defiance so convinced that they're going to go for Site A that they're changing strats up. And there's no one at Site B, so they're going to just be able to plant the spike. Just a free plant right there. Legitimately. <laughs> Meanwhile, Spence is just kind of holding back. He's going to go down, but that's okay. He's just eating up the clock for Mar in Marietta's favor. But... Marietta might have got a little careless. They are losing a couple of people. It's still a 3v2. Right Bob's there. gets the one, so it's now a 2v2. I don't know. I think Marietta might be able to... I mean, how long does it take for the spike to actually go off after planted? Um, it's about, like, 20 seconds. Remaining. Give or take. <laughs> well, I think they're going to be able to secure it. Once it starts beeping, like really fast yeah. like that is like about the time where it's like if you're not already defusing or you don't have it halved already you can't defuse it in time so you might as well just save mm -hmm. and so once again Marietta secures around the they're up six to zero and that was the first round where it was just a little scary for a second but they were able to stabilize it Looking at the items they got, we, we survived. they got pretty much everything they need. They have one alt ready to go. Defiance does have three ults, so they might be able to use that to to swing back. Baird is going back to site A, just playing the mind games. Defiance is over at site B, but they're going to get caught very quickly. That oh no, Baird moved up, was at A this time. Big kill on the Viper. Once again, the early kills on the Viper are huge. Getting rid of that zoning potential is detrimental to a team. Okay. Now we're seeing a, a possible split, or at least a couple from Marietta are rotating around in case there's a flank, but they may be eyeing Site B, or at least grouping up in the middle. Ahsoka's gonna be kind of scouting around. It looks like Marietta is going to be going for a rotate here, but it looks like Defiance has read that. Able to get early for frags on that rotate. 
However, I don't think it's going to be enough for Defiance. Especially if they were to get the two frags and Bob's was able to get the killing blow. Once again, just another strong performance by the Pioneers. I mean, I don't know what happened, but just going back to like last map, they were it was two and four, and they must have just flipped a switch because they have not dropped a round since then. And it's a big improvement from last game too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know the team's been working very hard since then. I mean, I mean, from what I know, you guys changed up like your warm-up procedures, your practice structures. You've made a lot of adjustments, and it's showing. It is. Res and Bubs. Hits. Res there with two kills of this round. That is a cool looking sniper rifle, I have to say. Oh, if he had hit that, that would have been huge. That was really close to a kill on that KJ there. That would have frustrated that KJ. I guarantee it. One enemy remaining. And Rez there with the 3K. It's going to fall back, though. It looks like they're just a free plant over at Site B. Spence is just there by himself. Spike planted. And Bubs is looking for that Viper behind that Toxin wall. Ahsoka's over there, too. Marriott, can we talk about Rez on that op real quick? Oh, yeah, please do so. That that op is working so well with Marietta's playstyle right now. The rest of the team is pushing, drawing them out. Meanwhile, Rez is over here getting frags from the back of our map, mm -hmm. which is... Easy kills, getting Marietta that win. It's that experience because he's also on the Rainbow Six team, so I think a lot of what he's gotten from Rainbow Six is paying off from here as well. I can't say I know a lot about Chamber other than his name, but it seems like he has a very similar play style to some of the Rainbow Six ops that Rez plays. It's I think that's why he likes it. Chamber is very sniper oriented, so his kit is built around sniping and getting those off things. Yeah, so he actually got a snipe there and Hisoka got two kills One himself. Rez getting his second. Once again, they're going to try to plant. Spence should be able to do so. He Plant. might die in the process because someone's coming by, but he's going to get out just in time. Meanwhile, Rez was looking for the kill, doesn't connect. But Bob's does get it. Nine to zero. I mean, I, I don't want to jinx it, but there's a possibility this could turn to a shutout. Yeah, that I was about to say. It's like now it's just the question: Will Marietta get that 13-0 victory? <laughs> I mean, it's possible. I mean, the way they're playing, and they do have three alts to go. I mean, I mean, they can definitely use a couple to win some rounds before the swap. I have this fight. Because there's still going to be at least one round where they swap sides. At least one. The hunt begins. Soka's trying to look for, for anyone. The Bobs is going to be rotating in. Wave and Rez both getting one down. But Bobs gets killed from behind. Didn't see. Didn't see him behind him, unfortunately. But still a 4v2. Letting that detain go off could be detrimental to Marietta right there. But it doesn't look like it's going to be. Defiance needed to push up so much faster there in order to get value out of that KJ ult. Waves trying to get a, gets a couple shots, falls back, switches to his pistol, and he's able to get it with a 3k. So 10 and 0, a huge lead right now for the Pioneers.
We're getting a little bit of by uh, phase lag. Should be back in just a second here. Baby. There we go. Okay, we're good. Oh, now, now we're gonna... It'll reset. We've seen this before. Maybe. At least we can see what they're by. Okay, here we go. We're resetting. I'm glad it doesn't kick us out of the game. I, I will say that. Yes. Bombs is speaking through. And he does end up going down, Spike but Husoka down is able to get one frag. Wave is going to get one. one enemy remaining. Wave is just on fire. Taking down three. And he's looking for number four. And he almost... He does get from it! the grave. Gets a 4k from the grave. That is crazy. Last round <laughs> in the half. So this is the last round before that swap. So, of course, Marietta is going to go all out with this. They have two alts ready. Defiance does have one. I mean, look at Waves at 19.52. Bubs 15.34. Rez on that chamber, 14.20. You know, it looks like uh, Marietta's bringing out a second off this round. Bubs already takes out one. Says, you know what? I like that weapon better. I'm going to take it. <laughs> Gotta be careful, though. Ah, he gets caught while reloading. That is unfortunate. Meanwhile, Wave does get one frag. I'm surprised they haven't used any alts yet, because I mean, this is the last round, so... Last round they have, so... Spence ends up falling, so now it's a 3v3. But Rez will be planting that spike. Does get it. Great shots there by Wave. Rez knows there's someone up there looking for the shot. And he's got the shot. A bit of a strange and unexpected angle from Rez right there. And you know, he gets the second one too. You know, it works. We'll, we'll... It, it works, yeah. Switching sides. So every... <laughs> All about mixing things up. Getting that those weird angles could just throw off somebody. Now here we go. We're at match point, folks. It is 12-0. So Marietta just has to win one round on defense, and that's going to be GG. That will be the match. Somebody in chat said Marietta has won around 20 rounds in a row. Yeah. It's about to be 23 right here. Maybe. Well, let's see. It was... Maybe. I, I'm not going to jinx it. Well, let's, do, let's do the math here real quick. So they were down two, so they got 11. So it's, in, it's yeah, 23 in a row right now. This round, if they win this round, it will be 23 in a row. 11 plus 12 is already 23. They need one more. It'd be 22, wouldn't it? I don't yeah, know. I, close I, enough. Yeah, sure. Can't do math on a Saturday. That's fine. But yeah. Looks like Defiance is moving in sight, but they do get an early frag onto Wave, so the that streak is going to be threatened. Already looking to play it, playing a same aggressive style. Rez ends up going... Man, it's a one-for-one one trade there, but Defiance is not going down without a fight. It was just Spence and Bob's. That's all that's left, and the spike's already been planted. Bob's gets one. And that spike is about to go off. Bob's is able to get one, but they're going to have to go in now if they want to... Bob's there with a 3k. He's going to start defusing. Is he going to get it off in time? He, does. he gets it and off! That, and that's the 13 0 victory for Mary. And he gets the kill. Was not meant for this oh my goodness, the clutch. The, the courage to go in there and to make the play. And he's able to do it. And that will secure the 13 0 win for the Pioneers. Let me get the score set up on here. Complete shutout on round uh, Avi, that, second game. Yeah, that was just a very, very dominating performance there.
by the pioneers. Let's just take a look at these numbers. They didn't have more than six deaths across mm -hmm. the whole team. Marietta. Yeah, I mean, if we just look at yeah. Wade was at 21.63. Bubs, 24.4. Rez, 16.30. Hisoka, 6.42. And Spence, 1.58. Yeah, you're right. No one died more than six times for that. I don't know what happened, but they just, just clicked, and it was a very strong performance. Round uh, seven of uh, game one, they said, you know what? I'm going to turn this. I'm, I'm going to flip the switch. <laughs> and they kept that flip. They did not flip back. So, yes, congratulations uh, to the, the Valor team on their first victory of the season, 2-0. Uh, insanely strong performance. In fact, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to see if we can get one of the players in here and just talk about that a little bit since we have a few minutes. So what I'm going to do, guys, is we're going to take a very quick break. I'm going to see if we can get one of the players, and we'll just talk a little bit about that game. So we'll be back in just a minute. All right, and welcome back. Thank you for uh, hanging out. So once again, congratulations to the Valorant team on their 2-0 victory versus Defiance. So we have one of our players here. So go ahead and introduce yourself to everyone because since you're new to the, the team. Uh, my name is Walker Dale. I'm, my in-game name is Wave, and I played Omen in the first map and Raze on the second. All right, but once again, congratulations. That was an incredible victory. So we, how does it feel to get your first victory in a collegiate esports match? It was really good. It was really nice for all of us to be hyped together and be ready to win. Excited. Okay. Now let's talk about map one. So at first you were struggling a little bit. It was like yeah. two four, and Defiance was ahead, and they were getting some great plays. What was the conversation like around that point? Because that was kind of where you guys like hit a switch, and you didn't drop a round since. I think it was just our setup. We had Killjoy on A and B on B, and I usually play around B long. 
that was going pretty okay. It wasn't doing too much just because they weren't really pushing along. They were ultimately going to get onto the team. I just switched up. Uh, Pudroy's utility must have, like, it was just a lot better on B, the setup that they were doing in the attack. Mm -hmm. And my uh, use of one ways, uh, a, uh, a shower, really just stopped them. Really cut off that. Yeah, they just didn't seem to have an answer to that. And yeah. then when you guys swap to offense, like, I have not seen such an aggressive offense. I mean, was that just part of the, the practices that you guys were doing? So, I mean, was that the, the plan that you just, your play style was to be very aggressive? I think we were just feeling it from defense just coming off of, I think it ended at 8-4. And we were just feeling it at that point. We just knew, we kind of just clicked, knew what to do. I was flashing through U-Haul. Everybody was coming out of showers and we were weaving. Okay, so then going into the ice box where you guys were going to be on offense first. So mm -hmm. what was the thinking there? What was the? I mean, we obviously saw how well the plan executed. but yeah. What was the the strategy? Well, with that? switching me off of smokes and on the duel, it kind of gave me a sense to, uh, I don't know, be more aggressive than I was last game because I felt like I was kind of passive last game, holding angles, playing conservatively, everything, and knowing that we were attacking, knowing that I had to get in there, do the dirty work, mm -hmm. and uh, clubs, getting in there. Cleaning house. That was really the plan. We got smokes down, and then we go in. Did you think a thirteen zero sweep was a, a possibility on there? <laughs> no, we did not. But yeah, that was that was amazing. So, anything you'd like to say to to everyone who's watching? Uh, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the game. All right. Well, thank you for taking some time to talk to us. Congratulations again uh, on your victory. All right. So, what we're gonna do, guys? Uh, we will. Shut down the stream, uh, but we do have more esports coming your way. Uh, around 3 o'clock, our League of Legends team will see if we can continue the victory over Defiance in, well, in League of Legends, of course. So, yeah, that'll be around 3 o'clock. So, we'll, we'll have that up probably about a half hour beforehand. Uh, so, we hope that you'll come back for that. Uh, once again, thank you for our sponsors with HyperX for providing the, the peripherals uh, that our players are able to use. For all the latest updates with what's going on with Married College Esports, please, please be sure to follow us on here on Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all at Married Esports. We try to post a whole bunch of stuff on there for you guys so you know.